स्थापकाय च धर्मस्य सर्वधर्मस्वरूपिणे अवतार वरिष्ठा रामकृष्णा ते नम श्रुतिस्मृतिपुरा आलय करुणाल नमा भगवत्द शंकर लोकशंक वि आर् कंटिन्यूंग अवर डिस्कशन ऑन वन ऑफ दि प्राइमरी प्रिलिमिनरी इंट्रोडक्टरी वर्क्स द्वैत वेदांत दिस इज ए बुक दैट नॉर्मली स्टूडेंट स्टडी बिफोर दे दे टेक अप द स्टडी ऑफ शंकराचार्यस ऑन कमेंट्रीज बिकॉज इट गिवस uh a uh, very comprehensive but uh, preliminary ideas of vedanta philosophy and vedanta culture uh, the tradition of uh, lineage the qualifications of the teacher the students and how we should approach uh, the subject of spiritual life all these are included in this work <clears throat> so in the last session i was talking about the seven fundamental disciplines or qualifications or prerequisites for uh, taking up vedantic study the first four, four one together can be called sadhana chatushtayam which means four fundamental disciplines qualifications in sanskrit shankaracharya elaborates this in this text itself adu nitya nitya vastu vivekha then iha mutra phara bhog viragha samadhi satka sambhati mumukshutu first we must have a sense of what is real what is most relevant and most important in our life and then we must uphold that fundamental value and then we must um, give up our interest in unnecessary or irrelevant things then that will naturally develop will help us to develop uh, a sense of renunciation a great uh, steadfast devotion to our chosen ideal and a uh, indifferent attitude towards things which are uh, not necessary which are somewhat insignificant in our life and then again actually this happens in our life when we have an ideal to follow that gives us a sense of self control self restraint it helps us to conserve our energy it also helps us to use our time properly our energy resources our time all can be uh, used very intelligently very economically if we have a higher ideal to follow and so it is called samadhi sukha sampatti self restraint sense, sense control controlling one's mind then endurance forbearance a sense of sanctity and sacredness the ability to concentrate inner peace and tranquility and contentment and the fourth one is mumukshutu means a strong urge for spiritual liberation or spiritual enlightenment after these four qualifications three additional important qualifications are necessary we should not ever get away with the impression that we have to acquire all these qualifications one after another it's not like that see if you if you are beginning to learn to drive and if a driver tells you if you are if you are a small boy if a driver tells you you have to open the car then you have to switch on the engine then you have to do this you may think it's a very elaborate process taking several hours but in fact it is only just a matter of half a minute or so actually of i mean starting a car like that in spiritual life also if we develop one important quality then all other qualities all other disciplines automatically follow this is an important thing so philosophy is different from spiritual life 
in actual spiritual life even when you have a sense of higher ideal to follow it will automatically give you the ability to give up your interest in unnecessary things and dedicate yourself for something higher and that again actually disciplines your mind it helps us to organize our energy and use our time properly it reduces distraction and dissipation so all these actually come together even if a person has got a strong desire for spiritual growth that itself will automatically produce the other three qualifications so we should not get away with the wrong notion that one should follow from i mean uh, one to it's a, it's not a step by step process it is an automatic natural process you can always remember what i said just now driving a car see if somebody tells you that you have to uh, yeah, there are three four five things to do before you op- you start a car you open the car you sit there in the seat and things like that but a driver professional driver for him it is a matter of half a maybe 10 seconds or maybe half a minute so in real life these things are natural there is a spontaneity and naturalness in real life but after these four are accomplished three additional qualifications are mentioned which are very important one is shravanam now if you look at the dictionary whether aptis dictionary moni williams dictionary or any dictionary you find shravanam means listening to somebody or hearing but here shravanam means come i mean feeding our mind with a great idea a great idea so to speak it could be by reading that is also shravanam but because actually when you read a word you also hear it that's why you are able to remember what you don't hear you will never be able to remember so when you are silently reading a word or a sentence you are actually hearing it this is an important thing to remember so that is shravanam means feeding our mind with a great idea of course itham vakehi tadarthana sandhanam shravanam bhavet as i mentioned you know this vidyaranya vidyaranya swami was a great vedantin who comes within shankaracharya's lineage around 14th century maybe a little earlier uh, bc he jivan mukti viveka panchadeshi some of his important books so he says uh, shravanam means you hear or you get acquainted with a statement or a word and then you follow you contemplate you follow that idea with meaning because when you hear a word or read a word with full meaning you will remember next is mananam is contemplation deeper contemplation sudasya arthasya ubaddhi bhi chintanam mananam means when you read something when you hear something you understand the meaning and then logically using your own reasoning powers you are analyzing the meaning and the essence and the sense of what we read this is also important the seventh uh, qualification is nididhyasanam which actually means Uh, getting rid of all uh, negative thought currents and getting established in a continuous natural spontaneous flow of positive thought current conduces you to spiritual study that means you are mentally you are you are actually internalizing the whole thing that's why vijadiya pratyaya tiraskarena sajadiya pratyaya pravahikaranam nididhyasam two currents are the going on within our mind one is when we try to do something good or noble a, a flow like a river a flow of negative and uh, unfriendly often um, uh, contradictory or conflicting thought currents one after another will come facing us this you should be able to reject and in in its place we have to form a positive thought current it means get internalized internalization of 
what we contemplate on. So these are three important qualifications that come after uh, sadhana chadushtayam. Now, this is very, very important. Why do we feel a kind of indifference, boredom, when we read a good book? For a person whose mind is not ready, you place before him the Bhagavad Gita or let's say Dhammapada or maybe uh, the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, you keep. Our mind actually can pick up only what it is ready to pick up. And that's because our mind as its own constitution Samskaras, vasanas, what we call tendencies and impressions, thought currents, memory systems, which will not allow us to read what we want to read. We want to read the Gita, but our mind naturally go, go, goes towards something totally different from it. Maybe something very unfriendly, very often in this modern age of information explosion, it can be very dangerous also. Sometimes it is said, you know, mind being fed with dirt and filth will try to accumulate more dirt and more filth. Whatever we have in our mind, it wants to get more and more. So, what we are ready for, that we normally try to accumulate. So, these are the seven important qualifications. Now, after this, uh, I shall take up what can be called the very heart of this book. You can see how a relatively small, but very important and very comprehensive Vedantic primer deals with the subject. Here, it's in the form of a dialogue between a teacher and his guru. Complete freedom, the total absence of enforcing any view, you should follow me or else, that is absolutely, totally absent in this book. So in the Gita itself, you know, at the end of the text, Vimursya edad asheshena ethechasi tathakuru. Lord Krishna makes a statement, he tells his student, I don't know if you can think of other than Buddha and Shankaracharya, you cannot think of any other teacher who said this. Now look here, Sri Krishna is telling Arjuna, you listen to me, that's okay. Uh, I have taught you this great spiritual knowledge of spiritual knowledge means secret means very rare spiritual knowledge. Now you analyze, try to think over what I learned, what I taught you, analyze with your own reasoning power, and then whatever you are willing to accept accept it, the rest you reject. This is the, uh, uh, in, the last instruction coming from Lord Krishna. After teaching everything, the teacher doesn't ask the student to blindly accept. But he says, use your own intelligence, your own power of wisdom, and try to understand and accept whatever you are ready to accept. Vimursya edad asheshena means, edad asheshena vimursya means you, after completely analyzing, critically analyzing, vimursya means having critically analyzed. That's the real meaning of vimursya. So, after having critically analyzed what I taught you, you do whatever you feel like doing. Like that, here also in the Viveka Chudamani also, that is the approach of the teacher. So, uh, if you have got the book, or later when you read the book, you may perhaps think of taking the 51st verse of this text. 51st. Remember, I mentioned earlier there could be one or two different versions. Some of these Viveka Chudamani printed works has got 
um, I've got uh, 579, sometimes 582, sometimes 584, because in some versions, the invocations and the concluding verse, prayer, are also included as the main body of the text. But in this book, which I'm using here, the, it is 51st verse. So it is this simple. Ko nama bandha kadhame shagataha kadham pradishtha asya kadham vimokshaha koso anatma paramak atma tayor vivega kadhame the uchidam. Now, this, this question shall put, I mean, the, the student puts before the teacher seven questions. What are the questions? What is bondage? Ko nama bentha. What is bondage? What is bondage? One may think, what is, what are you talking about bondage? So, living in this physical body, which as you know, is a bundle of, a skin bag of things, which you won't like to touch and eat your food, without using, without washing with soap. If you touch any of the things that come out of the body, you will wash your hands. If you touch that, if you wash your hands before eating food. So this body is a skin bag. Body is great because this human body can be used for great purposes. You know, the great Einstein, Aristotle, Shankaracharya, Ramanuja, or Gandhi, Buddha, Vivekananda, Sri Ramakrishna, they also had the same kind of physical body that we have. And they are still remembered. So they also used this body. But they used this body, they did not identify themselves to be with this body. They could identify with something other than or beyond this body. So if you take the body as such, it is not a very pleasant place to live, to sit, and to reside. So it is a bondage. And it, it, is, it comes, it grows, it changes, it falls sick, it, 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 and it decays, and practically there is nothing so glorious about this body as such. But the body itself becomes a vehicle, a tool, an instrument for say, for a higher purpose. Kalidasa in the Kundi Kumara Sambhava in the fifth Sarga, Sarira Madhyam Kalu Dharma Sadhana. I mean, so Malinatha commentary, the, you know, uh, uh, Malinatha is a great commentator who wrote commentaries on Kalidasa's books. So in Kalidasa's Kumara Sambhava is one of the famous books. Many a fifth Sarga. Uh, the, you know, Shiva is trying to test his devotee, Uma, he says, Apikriyartham sulabham samit kusam jalani visnana vidikshamaniti apisvasaktiya tapasi pravartase sharira madhyam khalu dharma sadhanam. It's a very famous verse. And this, uh, the statement is often used by Ayurvedic uh, philosophers as something very important. The point is, Mukhyam sadhanam, this body is the most important instrument. That's the meaning of the statement. This body of ours is the most important instrument. So, the body is an important instrument if you use it properly. But, to identify ourselves with this body alone, that is a terrible thing to do. That is a bondage. So, we are something that, that is much higher than this body. Body is only a residential structure in which something higher than the body resides, Atman. Then we, our purpose in life is to identify ourselves with that Atman which is within this body, for which this body is only an instrument, an outer structure, an outer shell. So, uh, I mean, being born itself with this strong obsession or idea that I am this body, 
that is a bondage this world itself is a bondage in fact that is a primary fundamental principle of buddhism also in dukkha pratiti samutpada the twelve link chain trishna desire is the cause of uh, embodiment birth and uh, uh, the all the problems all the chatvari ari satyani all the uh, griefs all the uh, imperfections of life It's all because of obsession with body. So this is a bondage. We should get back to our real spiritual identity. So that's why ko na what is bondage? Ko naam bentha. First question. Second question is katham esha agata. How this bondage came about? How did it arise? Then katham pradistha asya. how does it continue to exist and how do you get out of it that is katham vimokshaha it is not physically it is not getting out of the body physically no death is not necessarily liberation but there are many great men and women who have been in our past who were liberated by living within the body while living with the body it's called jay called jeevan mukta jeevan nabi mukta you can be liberated even when you are um, in the san francisco market street as you know that's vivekananda's great statement is that you can see in our website swami vivekananda said uh, standing in the in the, the streets uh, market street in san francisco Uh, can you keep your mind calm and quiet and contemplate contemplate that is the real sign of liberation that's a real sign of yoga that is the real the highest spiritual experience but is something that we have to attain and it's not just a concept or an idea that we want that you want to just to pretend to have achieved it is something that takes maybe several life cycles for us to achieve so uh, here liberation means katham vimoksha ka vimoksha means liberation liberation does not mean getting rid of the body liberation means getting rid of the body identity so that's idea it is sharirakma buddhi mean the wrong notion that uh, the, the, the body is the only thing that exists what we call atman is only this body this wrong notion should be got rid of and that is liberation koso anatma and what is that which is distinct and different from atman paramat atma what is paramatman what is supreme reality tayo viveka katham etad uchyata now please explain uh, i mean uh, how to distinguish between this atma and anatma how to distinguish between the real and the unreal please explain to me so these seven questions are put before the teacher and the teacher unfolds the entire philosophy of vedanta uh, very very logically very elaborately now i am just giving um, a, just a, an introduction of this book i have already given a number of lectures on this subject and when i was going to stanford as an in person in person sessions at about before the covid uh, lockdown came i was taking this class very elaborately in stanford so the archives you can get and also you can get elsewhere now i want to say something else about this one of the uniqueness of this text is i shall come back to the subject again but one of the unique uh, features of this text is very very uh, uh, wonderful psychological insight into our mind that's a very if you those who those of you can remember later you can refer to this the verse number could be 326 it could be 27 or 25 in some other versions of this same text so that still you can you can verify there's not much difference now this verse tells us how we forget our true nature 
how this bondage comes how we identify ourselves with what is not atman and what prevents us from identifying ourselves with our true identity atman there is a wonderful imagery it gives you in full measure what we call deviation from our ideal spiritual ideal the verse is this lakshyachudam ched yadi chittameshu bahirmukham sannipade tatastatah pramadata prachuda kelikantukah sopana pantu padito yatha tatha there is one word used in this verse sopana pankti means a staircase imagine a staircase and a boy or a girl little child is playing with a ball and somehow the ball falls down from his hand the the player the boy maybe the child is standing on the top uh, uh, step of the staircase somehow that ball falls down from his hands and falls right till it reaches the uh, the floor so sopana pantu in this in this uh, uh, flight of steps and bahir mukham sannibade tatastataka tatastataka means from one step to another step the ball falls on the top step of the staircase it is stopped there then it comes to the second third fourth fifth even if the staircase had 25 steps it won't stop till it reaches the 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 the, the top floor now in modern times suppose a student read something that is absolutely undesirable in the internet maybe in a movie or anywhere else and gets attracted gets misled and does something that person may end up in the prison maybe in the lunatic asylum maybe can turn out to be an alcoholic or drug addict so where does it begin but ca- casually accidentally we just click one button in the computer or iphone to be more specific this more common thing and it takes all the way it may take 20 years 30 years for that child to land in the prison or in the lunatic asylum 20 years later what happens a wrong idea is deposited in the mental system and it doesn't stop this an idea slowly it gets con- consolidated more and more undesirable tendencies and impressions actions and habits are formed as a result our mind falls down one step the first one step then second third fourth till it reaches the uh, bottom i mean the, the ground the floor of the stairs pramadada by mistake because of some delusion ideas prachuda keli kantuka i mean just a, somebody who is playing with a with a ball by mistake it falls down but it is doesn't stop till it reaches the the floor now this is the forceful powerful imagery that is used this is a warning to all of us so it is not only a book on vedanta philosophy you can see this deep psychology of uh of of of, of modern I mean, of, of spiritual life we very call this insight into the spiritual psychology of every spiritual seeker you can think of think of a, a flight of steps staircase and a ball falling on the first step the top floor you know that is lakshachudam uh, somehow 
that ball uh, the the child did not uh, did not throw the ball accidentally lectured to them it, it just uh, got distracted from its original goal lectured to the means you try to hit a ball in one direction but it got hit in another direction and it falls on the stair on the top layer of the staircase and it slowly comes down till it reaches hits the rock bottom this is at the insight into the human mind and uh, the deeper aspects of a spiritual psychology that you find in this text at the same time the highest spiritual truths are also explained the highest vedas are also explained see i shall read another important verse taranga phena brahma budbudadi sarvam surupena jalam yatha tatha chideva deha deva deha mandame tat sarvam chideva chideva garasam bisuddham so sarvam chideva everything is consciousness everything is brahman or atman ekarasam bisuddham so this is a very you can see a very graphic description of uh, of higher philosophy you can find here now <clears throat> think of the ocean and then in the ocean there are waves drops um and then um movements of water falling up and down now all these different manifestations of the water are the same water like that the entire creation is nothing but atman or consciousness brahman chideva ekarasam bisuddham now how do you how do you reconcile this if we can uh, go beyond our body mind thought emotions and feelings intellect everything if we in our spiritual journey through contemplation if we can connect ourselves without true identity atman within then we will realize that everything in this world is brahman only sarvam uh, idam khalu brahm that means sarvam khalu idam brahma this is a great statement in vedanta sarvam khalu idam brahma everything is brahman only for one who has reached this highest experience otherwise we may think if waves are different from the ocean because the ocean as such is calm and quiet waves are high they, they they go up they fall down drops are there forms are there so different manifestations of the same water so a child may think well waves are different from the ocean ocean is calm and quiet uh, quiet water and waves are tall and high and some they come they go do up go up and come down but for a knowledgeable person it is the same water that takes the form of the waves uh, the, the drops and the whirlpools all the same water now this is the state of a person who has reached the highest spiritual realization sarvam khalu idam brahma sarvam so you can see in this text first of all primary disciplines and then also some very very fundamental principles of advaita vedanta are clearly explained here now i am coming to another sub, another another verse that actually gives us an insight into the approach of the order how do we uh, read a spiritual textbook you know this fundamental text of indian philosophy that's a subject how do we how we should read a book 
and how we should uh, try to imbibe the ideas and how we should try to ex reach the experience level of those ideas. This is found in one verse, it is uh, uh, maybe uh, 282nd verse. The verse is simple, Sutya, Yuktya, Swanabhutya, Nyatva, Sarvatman, Atmanaha, Kotida Abhasa, the Prapta Swadhyaya, Panayam Kuru. This idea is Now, first we must read a text and then we must use our own reasoning power and then by our realization we must try to remove all wrong notions and misunderstandings and then we should reach the experience level sutya yuktya swanabhutya this is a fundamental approach in vedanta in hinduism and this is a very very rational approach you can read a book including this book or all the vedas you can read or bible anything you read but then vedanta textbooks do not tell you that they are going to give you a truth and you should listen blindly accept and should not ask any question vedanta doesn't tell you that's why you know yuktiya the shankaracharya says you read the book, Sudhi means, you know, that I already mentioned the beginning of the sessions, you know, Sudhi means Vedantic textbooks. Read Vedantic textbooks and then Yuktiya by using our own power of reasoning. It's called Uha Poha Vijakshanaka. In fact, this quality was mentioned as one of the fundamental characteristics of an ideal student. Medhavi Purusho Vidwar Uha Poha Vijakshanaka. Uha means the ability to accept what is to be accepted. Rationally think, analyze and then understand and that this is something which I should follow. And then there may be many things which you are, maybe you are not ready to follow. In that case, you should not worry about it. The apoha. So, uh, a great proficiency in reasoning in deciding what is to be accepted and what is not to be accepted. This is an important skill for every sincere, serious Vedantic student. That is Sutya Yuktya. The Swanabhutya, that's another important thing. Vedantic texts tell you that you can, you should read you should use your reasoning power, but you should also reach the experience level of what you read and what you decide to accept. That's what turns you into a spiritual person. So, by this process of studying properly, with our understanding, and then contemplating the meaning, and then internalizing and then finally experiencing for that we need to we need to take up a series of spiritual practices some of the vedantic textbooks in vedantic tradition uh, they tell you that if you are ready to uh, experience the truth then even one statement from a teacher is enough for you to become a jivan mukta a liberated soul. This is a very interesting, I think you don't find this sort, this higher ideas elsewhere. Uh, I, I can explain, I want to explain this. Uh, there are two fundamental schools in the post-Vedantic, uh, post-Shankarite tradition, post-Shankarite times. Mostly uh, these two approaches, these two views were developed by uh, uh, Shankaracharya's disciples and also their disciples and other Vedantic scholars who came in that lineage. It's called, they are called Prasthana Traya, means. So it's called Vivarana Prasthana and Vartika Prasthana and um, Bhamadi Prasthana. Uh, I can explain this. First of all, we should know Shankaracharya wrote these commentaries 
and uh, these commentaries uh, were later on further elaborated by uh, a great scholar called Anandagiri. So most of Shankaracharya's Vedantic textbooks, especially Bhashyas, uh, are further elaborated by or clearly explained by one great scholar, his name is Anandagiri and he wrote a tika, tika means a gloss, simple explanatory notes on important ideas of the Bhashya. So, during this time after Shankaracharya is passing away, different types of uh, interpretations of Shankara's philosophy and how we can practice, we can realize those ideas developed among the Vedantic scholars. There were two fundamental schools. One is uh, Vivarana, Vivarana Prasthana, the other is Bhamadi Prasthana. There is another school which also developed, it's called Vartika Prasthana, which actually got merged with Vivarana Prasthana. That's why I don't, I don't want to include it as a separate school. One school, one approach, one method of analyzing Vedantic teachings which follows the tradition of Padmapada Acharya, one of Shankaracharya's disciples, is called Vivarana Prasthana. It got the name Vivarana Prasthana because one great scholar who appeared in Padmapada's tradition, Prakashatma Yeti, he wrote a well-known book called uh, Panchapadhika Vivarana. Panchapadhika is the name of a text, it's a commentary uh, by Patmapada on Shankaracharya's commentary in Brahma Sutras. And this was a further elaborated and uh, commented upon by Prakashat Medhi and the name of this book is called Panchapadhika Vivarana. The, another school was Bhamadi Prasthana. It got the name Bhamadi because that was the name of the title of the book of a commentary on Shankaracharya's own commentary on, on Brahma Sutras written by Vajaspati Misra and the name of the book is Bhamadi Tika. And another approach which got merged with Vivarna Prasthana in many respects was the tradition of Sureshuracharya who wrote a well-known book that is that is Brigadarnu Vanishad Bhashivartigam and a few other important books he wrote. Now, according to one school, one of these schools, that is, according to Vivarana school, if you listen to a great statement in Vedanta, that immediately becomes your experience. This may strike as something interesting. How can a statement immediately give the experience? It's called Sabda Parokshavada. What it says is, suppose a person, a spiritual teach, spiritual aspirant, has practiced a lot of meditation, a lot of spiritual sadhanas in his whole life, and his mind is already so completely ready, prepared for the highest spiritual idea, spiritual experience. And if a teacher tells him, tell, gives him this uh, Tattumasi Mahavakya instruction, immediately that student will experience Agam Brahmasmi Anabhuti without any further spiritual practice. These ideas are found in Shankaracharya's own Mandukya, Kariga Bhashya, which of course we will take up later. So the point is, now I can give an example. Suppose one of you are driving every day uh, between San Francisco and Sacramento, hard about 100 miles. Every day you drive, in the morning you go there, evening you come. You drive for let us several years. If somebody tells you something about a place, a signboard, or a, or a big shop, or a small town in between, immediately you will understand because you are, you are driving between these two cities every day, let's say for 30 or 40 years. You don't need a Google map, you don't need any other source of information to really locate and to remember what he's talking about or the town or the shop because you yourself have seen the shop for many, many years while driving every day, morning and evening. Now, like that, 
if a spiritual seeker is fully established in all these seven qualifications that I outlined at the beginning of this class, Sadhana Dadushtaya and Sravana Manana Didithyasana. Then, if he is fully established in that, then one instruction is enough for him to experience the essence of the instruction. That's the idea behind it. To give an example, Sri Ramakrishna, Swami Vivekananda, Sri Ramakrishna. Sri Ramakrishna was practicing spiritual sadhanas all his life, right from his birth. Right from his birth, even as a boy, a little boy of five years, he had some higher mystical samadhi experience. And all his life was meditating, praying, he was communi he was in constant communion with God, Divine Mother, all the time, all his life. And the Tota Puri, a great teacher who belongs to the Puri Sampradaya, Puri tradition of Shankaracharya's tradition, he came to the Akshineshwar temple and instructed Sri Ramakrishna, gave this instruction of Mahavakya. Immediately Sri Ramakrishna got that experience. He emerged into Samadhi. He sat there for three days in Samadhi. Why? Because what the, the instruction that he received, he was more than prepared for that. It is something like telling, suppose you have already got a PhD and if you are going to sit in a, in a, in a graduation class, you won't require much time to understand what the teacher is explaining to you. If you, if you already have a post-graduation or PhD, then you go to a graduation class, you don't require any elaborate uh, instruction to understand what you are being taught. It is called Sabda Parakshoda, which means if a person gets Sabda, I mean, if he, if he instruction, immediately it becomes real experience for him. But this is one view. The other view is different. It is called Prasankhya Navada. This view was propounded by another uh, Vedantic movement. It is called Bhavadi Prasthana, which actually follows the tradition of um, Vajaspati Mishra. It says you listen to your instruction, that is not enough. Then you have to constantly think about the meaning because you are not ready for it. That is true for most of the 99 percent, more than, more than 99 percent of the population of spiritual seekers. One instruction will not work and will never work. What works for a Shankaracharya or a Sri Ramakrishna may not work for us. I know that in modern times it is difficult for people to accept that we are inferior to Buddha. Nobody will be happy if I tell you that you are not as great as Buddha. Everyone wants to be this egalitarian, democratic society, we are all equals. But in spiritual life, it is not a matter of what we want or what we choose, it is a matter of where we stand, it is a matter of our own evolution. Then you, you can find in Buddha, you, you, you read Buddha's um, this, uh, this rebirth stories, Jadaka tales. So many times uh, something happened, some disciple came to him and some disciples created some problems. Buddha began, then Buddha immediately begins a story. And then he tells, you know, in that previous life you were doing that and I was doing this. So you can find. And the whole problem is solved. Immediately the disciple is fully satisfied. So, unless we believe in the doctrine of reincarnation or rebirth and of course in the doctrine of law of karma, you will not be able to clearly understand what I am explaining now. So, what it means is for normal spiritual seekers, every spiritual practice begins as an idea, as a concept, as a wonderful idea, that's all. And then the idea goes down deeper and deeper. And still again there is a lot of conflict because other ideas, opposite ideas are trying to dominate. See, when we go to a library, we want to read Bhagavad Gita. But mind, oh, I will read something more sensational. 
because mind is not happy mind feels every minute is uh, like a whole day when you read the gita but if you read some thriller some uh, let us say uh, story something uh, sensational things then one hour is like one minute because our mind is not ready for it so frequently at the beginning there will be lot of conflict conflict between what we want to do and what our mind permits us to do whatever we want our mind doesn't permit us to do if mind put always cooperate with what we want to do then there will be no problem in this world so according to the prasankhyana school immediate experience doesn't follow instruction you have to listen to a teacher you have to read a book understand properly and then slowly get fully established in the idea and then you should also practice some karma yoga prayer uh, or reading holy books slowly you should enrich your mind with more and more spiritual ideas and we should slowly elevate our mind to a higher level of preparedness it may take several life cycles any doubt you can read buddha's jataka tales it may take several life cycles but it's not a delay because in spiritual life whatever you do you never lose that money you may lose bank balance we may lose but good actions good thoughts good words or any even little bit of spiritual practice it will create a spiritual bank balance which will never never be lost so we are never late and nothing is lost that's what lord krishna says in the gita in the 6th chapter arjuna asks one question puts one question before krishna he says he he uh, uh, arjuna asks krishna now look here i been listening to you but suppose i make a mistake what will happen to me పార్థనైవేహనామూత్ర వినాశస్థస్ విద్యది నహి కళ్యాణకృత్ కశ్చి దుర్గతి తాత గచ్చతి దిస్ ద రిప్లై ఫ్రమ్ కృష్ణ కృష్ణ టెల్స్ లార్డ్ కృష్ణ టెల్స్ అర్జున లుక్ హియర్ ఎనీ పర్సన్ ఎనీ ఈవెన్ హంబుల్ ప్రాక్టీషనర్ ఎ బిగినర్ ఇన్ స్పిరిచువల్ లైఫ్ ఇఫ్ యూ హస్ మెడిటేటెడ్ జస్ట్ హాఫ్ ఎన్ అవర్ ఎవ్రీ డే వన్ మినిట్ ఎవ్రీ డే ఓర్ మే బీ జస్ట్ ఫార్ ఎ ఫ్యూ డేస్ ఇన్ హిస్ హోల్ లైఫ్ that spiritual practice will create a spiritual bank balance and that is yours when you die it will follow you in next life you will be born with this checkbook of spiritual capital and you can continue your spiritual journey based on where you, where you stood in the previous life so whatever we do whatever little humble spiritual practice we do it will remain with us in the in the vega chudamani there is a beautiful description of uh, our mental constitution you know that is a very very famous uh, in interesting discussion is there you know it says vagaadi panja sarvanaadi panja pranaadi panja panja pramukhaani panja vidya devi vidya vi కామ్య కర్మణి పుర్యష్టకం సూక్ష్మ శరీరమాహు పుర్యష్టకం సూక్ష్మ శరీరమాహు సో వాట్ ఈస్ సూక్ష్మ శరీర వాట్ ఈస్ హ్యూమన్ కాన్స్టిట్యూషన్ వాట్ ఈస్ అవర్ మెంటల్ కాన్స్టిట్యూషన్ ఈస్ క్లియర్లీ ఎక్స్ప్లెయిన్ ఇన్ ది ఇన్ ది ఇన్ ది భగవద్గీత ఇట్స్ సెల్ఫ్ సారీ ఇన్ ది వేగచూరామణి సారీ వేగచూరామణి ఇట్స్ సెల్ఫ్ ఒక భగవద్గీత ఆల్సో టెల్స్ మెనీ టైమ్స్ లార్డ్ కృష్ణ సేజ్ పూర్వాభ్యాసేన తేనైవ హృదేవి అపచో అపచోపి సహ జిజ్ఞాసి రవియోగస్య శబ్ద బ్రహ్మ అది వచ్చే పూర్వాభ్యాసేన తైనైవ ఆన్ ద స్ట్రెంగ్త్ ఆఫ్ వాట్ యు హ్యావ్ డన్ వాట్ స్పిరిచువల్ ప్రాక్టీసెస్ యు హ్యావ్ ఆల్రెడీ పెర్ఫార్మ్ ఇన్ యూ ప్రీవియస్ లైఫ్ యు విల్ కంటిన్యూ యూ స్పిరిచువల్ జర్నీ అవశ్య ఐ మీన్ యు యు ఆర్ హెల్ప్లెస్ ఇఫ్ యూ హ్యావ్ డన్ సంథింగ్ గుడ్ ఇన్ యూర్ ప్రీవియస్ లైఫ్ యు కెన్ నాట్ డిస్ ఆన్ ఇట్ యు యు ఆర్ బాండ్ విత్ ఇట్ హృదయ అవశోపి సమీ యు ఆర్ హెల్ప్లెస్ 
Suppose you have done a lot of spiritual practice in a previous life. You want to be Batman, you cannot. Because the spiritual bank balance you have created will force you in the right direction, even if you want to be otherwise. That's what Gita says. So in the Viveka Chudamani, there is a great description, a wonderful description of the mental system, what we call a real human personality. What is that? Vagadi Pancha, Sravanadi Pancha, Pranadi Pancha, Pramukhani Pancha. Buddhya Davidya Pircha Kama Karmani, Puryashtakam Sukshma Sri Ramahu, Puryashtakam means. Let us say eight cities or eight units, eight structures. That is five made up of speech, five made up of hearing, five made of breath, and five subtle elements, then buddhi, mana, chitta, mana, hangara, then superimposition, avidya, kama, karma. I shall try to explain this. Actually, if you want to know what we are, why we do what we do, why we are not able to do what we want to do, often there is a conflict between what we want to do and what we end up doing. This particular verse, if you are interested, you can see it is 98 verse, which actually gives a wonderful description of our mental constitution, our real personality. You know, the body structure is only a very insignificant aspect of our real personality. Our real personality is actually what is behind this body, our thoughts and ideas, that's what we are remembered for after this body is gone. So, if we remember Gandhi, for example, Gandhi certainly was not a very remarkable looking person, but Gandhi was a great man. There are wonderful people who may look slightly better than Gandhi physically, but Gandhi is so much remembered. Or Lincoln, for example. There are many people who may look slightly better than Lincoln, but Lincoln is remembered as a great man more than many others. So the reason is, the real personality is behind and beyond the physical body. What we see with our eyes is only an outer shell. Behind what we see is the real man, the real personality. And it is said, the aggregate of these eight, that is Yanindriyas, Karmindriyas, then Panchapranas, then Panchamahabhudas, then, so, and then, Four aspects of Antakkarana, Mani Mana Tahankara and Avidya Kama Karma. We will explain this in the coming session. So what it means is how we we uh, bring with us a bank balance from previous life. Not that not material bank balance, but a spiritual bank balance. You may you may have found people with a natural instinct for certain skills, certain ideas. It may be for spiritual life, it may be for music, it may be for art, it may be some, unfortunately for some, doing something nasty also, you find. Both you find, the good and bad find. Why? Because they are bringing, they are being born with the baggage. And they cannot throw away that, it is, they are born with it. So, how this happens? How this transmigratory cycle continues, how we are born from life to life carrying this baggage. And how actually we can throw away this baggage if we want. The way, the only way to throw away this baggage that we are carrying from life to life is to practice these seven disciplines that we already disciplined. You can find Vega Chudamani unfolds this uh, wonderful plan to throw away the baggage that we are born with especially the, the undesirable baggage, the heavy burden that we are born with. So maybe some, we call karmic blocks, negative instincts that we want to get rid of, but not able to. How to get rid of that? Vegu Sudamani explains further. You can also listen to the Yoga Sutra classes which we, um, in which some of these ideas are explained from a different perspective. Uh, you can see in our website and our YouTube the Yoga Sutra classes. Okay, thank you. Now we are open for discussion. Most welcome.
means it, it it has four components one is mana then buddhi then chitta and ahankara yeah mind is the speculative faculty suppose you are seeing an object in front of you you are not sure what it is so mind goes on speculating whether it is this or that and so on it is mind when you actually decide it is this after some time you decide it is buddhi intellect nisyatmika antakana buddhi buddhi ಸಂಕಲ್ಪ ವಿಕಲ್ಪಾತ್ಮಿಕ ಅಂತ ಕನ್ನವೃತ್ತಿ ಮನ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಯು ನೋ ಅಹಂಕಾರ ಈಸ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ವೆಲ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಸೀನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟ್ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ವೀಕ್ ಐ ಮೀನ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಯು ಐಡೆಂಟಿಫೈ ಯುವರ್ ಸೆಲ್ ಆ್ಯಸ್ ದ ಒನ್ ಹೂ ಸಾ ದಿಸ್ ಸಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟ್ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ವೀಕ್ ಬಟ್ ರಿಮೆಂಬರ್ ದ ಬೇಸಿಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ದಿಸ್ ರಿಮೆಂಬರೆನ್ಸ್ ಈಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಈಸ್ ಎ ಮೆಮೊರಿ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಲೈಯಿಂಗ್ ಸಂಬರ್ ಇನ್ ಯುವರ್ ಮೆಂಟಲ್ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ ಸೊ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಕಾಂಪನೆಂಟ್ of the mind mental system where memories are accumulated and deposited is a repository of memory is called chittam chittam is different from chit chit is consciousness chit is knowledge it is consciousness is awareness chittam is just the memory system that's an important thing it is actually you want clarifications yeah in the in the in the samadhi shakti sampatti we have samadhan Yeah. It is translated as Chitta Ikagrita. Yeah. But th- that in English we say it is mental focus, one-pointedness of the mind or of the Chitta, of the memory bank. Yeah, you know, there you, you can really focus on something only if a memory system cooperates with you. Concentration is not possible when there is conflict within mind. And conflict is based on conflict, the root cause of conflict is conflicting memories you remember something you remember its opposite and many things you remember that creates conflict so this distraction is gone so you are able to focus on something that's called samadhan actually this samadhanam can also mean peace serenity that's why you know when when more than one ideas come into conflict uh, serenity concentration and peace of mind will be disturbed we enjoy peace of mind only when there is a continuous flow of the same mental me, me, mental thought currents it's one of the samadhi sarka sampatti the third component of sadhana chatushtaya anam ya yeah, namaskar uh, for, uh, for in the shravanam mananam nididhyasana for yeah. nididhyasana you mentioned uh, Uh, definition is vijatiya pratyaya anantarita sajatiya pratyaya no, no, I, I, i shall mention vijatiya pratyaya tiraskarena tiraskara means rejection getting rid of vijatiya means viparita jatiya means different distinct opposite conflicting thought currents pratyaya actually here means ideation it comes in the form of memories conflicts so when when there is a continuous flow of opposite ideas opposite memories blocking your attempt to focus on let us say one auspicious uh, uh, statement from the gita or upanishad or any book for any sacred book that you consider sacred you know immediately there is a conflicting thought current that blocks you that is vijadiya pratyaya tiraskara means getting rid of rejection and when after after or by getting rid of negative thought currents what do you do sajadiya pratyaya pravahi karana pravahi karana means making a flow so you should have a continuous spontaneous flow a harmonious flow of positive thought currents 
this uh, sounds uh, very similar to the patanjali yoga sutras in the vivakti pada tasya prashanta vahita yeah. samskara yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, so that um, tranquil uh, samskaras uh, continuous flow of tranquility mm. uh, that follows on uh, that sutra follows after nirbija samadhi yeah. uh, tasya uh, after nirbija samadhi yeah. Yeah, yeah. so are we uh, talking about achieving nirbija samadhi in this part nididhyasanam now nididhyasanam is nididhyasanam is um it is a vedantic approach you know so the, how if you if you uh, do a juxtaposition of the bija samadhi didhyasam perhaps you may be off the mark because um uh, you can see all samadhi experiences of yoga tradition can be compared to didhyasana Uh, samadhi is the yoga samadhi can only make you fit up completely absolutely fit for higher progress it is not the goal it is only the uh, let us say all samadhi the bija samadhi also can be compared to the compared to the didhyasana which has reached the highest level that's all that's an important thing nididhyasanam can be compared with the some different forms of samadhi yoga sutras uh, in Ad- advaitins do not accept the yoga samadhi experience as uh, uh, you, you know aparokshana bhuti that's a different thing because in yoga there is always this duality plurality continuing because it is so many purushas you know purusha Uh, so it, 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 it yoga is a dualistic system so it helps you to reach a very high level of spiritual fitness for uh, getting jnana prapti or realization but it is not realization itself so we can say it may be it may not be wrong to equate the bija samadhi uh, with uh, nididhyasanam in its highest level that's true So, uh, we are at least looking at the comparable um, achievement of concentration yeah. in the nididhyasana yeah nididhyasana for a beginner it may be uh, it can be compared with such, with sabija samadhi or just before that but a nididhyasana in its most advanced state can be uh, compared to nirbija samadhi because in nirbija there is no focus there is no object in this in this nididhyasana the highest level when all negative thought currents are completely rejected when positive thought currents are uh, you identified then there will be no focus so it is roughly the same as nirbija samadhi and all seeds of again going back the previous uh, levels is completely blocked so it becomes nirbija okay. thank you thank you Maharaj, there's a YouTuber question from Christian. Um, how can we use mind to go beyond mind? Yeah, mind can be used to go beyond mind. You know, so actually, mind itself, as we understand in Vedanta, mind is just a just a state of vrittis, uh, memories, awareness. functioning as speculation when you speculate you have got different options in your mind that is that is sankalpa vikalpaatmika antakarna vritti when and when a particular vritti or mental uh, uh, impression uh, we call it this vritti sometimes called wave you know but wave it can be called wave in a way Uh, like a waves of an ocean you know moving or functioning in any particular manner so uh, when it's functioning uh, as speculation it's called mind when it's functioning as a decision making faculty it's called buddhi or intellect now a person a spiritual seeker first he turns his attention inward 
and when his mind becomes calm and quiet and still, it is not mind. Mind can be called mind only when it is disturbed, it is functioning as a speculative, speculative faculty. If you have no conflict, actually it means, suppose, it, suppose you claim you have absolutely no conflict, you have gone beyond mind. So long as you are, you are identifying yourself with the mind, you cannot be free from conflicts. That's the prophet. And that mind identifies itself with Atman. It's an important thing. When mind identifies itself with Atman, then it, is, it ceases to be the mind. It is no more the mind. Going beyond mind is nothing. It is, a, it is an ornamental word, you know. In modern times, you know, when you give lectures, you need some masala. Masala means spices, if those of you don't know, you know. You need, uh, like, uh, trader juice, uh, cereal advertisement, you know. You need some, something. But really speaking, uh, there are some books for you. You can read, you can read, Drik Drishya Viveka. Or you can read some, it may be translations, may be available of Yoga Vasistha, uh, Ashtavaka Gita. There are some important books. Even oh, the teaching of Ramana Maharshi is another. Ramana Maharshi uh, takes many of these ideas directly from Shankara's commentary. Many of Ramana Maharshi's ideas you can directly can be called in Shankara's ideas. He was a great follower of Shankara's ideas. It's an important thing. So what it means going beyond mind is, mind means you, you are identifying yourself with Atman, which means mind no longer functions for you. That's an important thing. Mind functions only so long as you have conflicts, thought currents, memories, impressions, you are speculating, this and that. The moment you are totally being established, there is no more mind for you, actually. You are identifying yourself with Atman. That's why you're behind. Pranam Maharaj. Yeah. My yeah. question is... Yeah. Namaskar, Namaskar. Namaskar. Hmm. What steps or practices should a student of Vedanta take to lessen his or her attachment with the body? Yeah. One, of course, the first step is to try to read books that tell you this body is not everything. Any book, any idea that reminds you that you are not this body, you are something beyond this body, it will be helpful. It's an important thing. And then, of course, uh, doing some karma yoga. In that respect, Yoga Sutras and Vedanta agree on one point. Yoga Sutra calls it Kriya Yoga. You know, Tapaswadhyaya Isara Panidhananani Kriya Yoga. The first sutra of Sadhana Pada. The same thing is actually according to Vajaspati and other commentators of Yoga Sutras, Kriya Yoga includes Bhakti Yoga and Karma Yoga both. So any, any kind of endeavor, effort, even physical effort, some physical work without any selfish motive, any noble physical work will generate a spiritual benefit. You can easily see, suppose you're walking in the street and you find if somebody, you, 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 let's say blind man, you help that man to cross the street. That evening, you may oh, I have done something sensible. No way, it is your own, in your own private world, in your own mental world, you enjoy, you get this contentment, you have done something sensible. So every unselfish, noble act, physical act, even physical act, physical, mental, intellectual, verbal, anything, it will produce a spiritual bank balance in our mind. So, that will help us to slowly start our ascent to higher levels of identification. That's the beginning of our spiritual journey. Any noble, unselfish act physical, mental, or intellectual, plus uh, getting uh, ourselves familiar with these ideas, feeding our mind with good spiritual food. That's one thing. Especially we should try to focus on ideas that remind us about what our body really is. You know, every doctor knows. 
Every doctor knows what the body contains. Doctors do not necessarily become spiritual teachers. Of course, there are many doctors who are great spiritual teachers. Absolutely, no doubt about it. Not everyone. Why? So our intellectual awareness of what our body is may not help us to get rid of physical identity. You know, identity with the physical body it doesn't happen. Our intellectual knowledge doesn't translate into real help to mind. It doesn't help the mind all the time. We do many things not because we are not uh, we are not aware of the fact that we should not do that because our mind cannot desist from doing that. That's the problem. So the only way out is to accumulate a lot of spiritual samskaras but doing good things, speaking good things, re feeding the mind with good spiritual food. That's the only way. Thank you. Yeah. I'm trying to understand how samadhi is different from experiencing identity with Brahman. Can you describe that a little bit more? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, uh, in yoga, yoga philosophy and yoga sutras, generally speaking, you know, they believe in two fundamental eternal categories, permanent categories, one is Purusha and Prakriti. The whole yoga process is meant to get back to our Purusha identity by discerning our Prakriti identity. Means we, because body, mind, intellect, thoughts, ahangara, all these are different evolutions of Prakriti in Sankhya philosophy. So Sankhya system is essentially dualistic. Vedanta that we are discussing now is non-dualistic. So, uh, in Vedanta, when we experience, uh, when you reach the highest Advaitic experience, we, we, we look upon everything as manifestation of the same. Just like uh, the waves, the drops, the forms, all these are non-distinct and non-different from the ocean. But for some time we may think wrongly, of course, the waves are very tall, tsunami 30 feet, 40 feet, 30 meters. You, you cannot say it is the ocean because ocean is far away, but tsunami has already entered the land, you cannot. But in, we know that it's the same ocean, really speaking. Now the point is, uh, this is the Advaitic view, Vedantic view. In Sankhya system, uh, is a permanent dualism. Uh, once you identify yourself with the Purusha, Prakriti continues its play elsewhere. And not only that, every single person is a Purusha. It is called, so it is a, uh, it, it is a pluralistic system. Means. But Vedantins believe that the same Atman manifest in these 8 billion people in this, let's say the 8 billion people inhabiting this earth. 8 billion jivas, what you call individual souls, which means 8 billion body, minds, complex systems. Or the same Atman is manifesting in these 8 billion human body systems. 8 billion samskaras, 8 billion units of human personalities. But these are all samskaras, vasanas, vrittis, impressions only. When they realize their true identity, they will understand this body-mind complex differs, but the indweller, the inner resident, the Atman is the same. When you reach that stage, you continue to be living in this world, but you will be seeing only the absolute reality. Let's say a goldsmith, may value a different golden ornaments only on the basis of the quality of the gold. So he looks at the gold only, not the workmanship, other things may be material. Let a pot maker, you have let's say 1000 different uh, utensils made of the same clay, pots and pans and glasses and cups and so on. But a pot maker, everything is clay only or mud only, nothing else. 
but when you uh, drink the water you use a cup when you store water you use a jar perhaps or a bigger vessel but uh, for the pot maker it is the same clay advaita approaches the approach of the pot maker the goldsmith he doesn't care for whether the gold is uh, gold is converted into a necklace a ring or whatever else it doesn't bother for he knows the, he will melt it and he will judge the quality of the gold that's what he has. See, looks at pot maker he doesn't bother he knows everything whether it's cup or glass or jar it's only clay so advaita is like a, like a pot maker looking at everything as different manifestations of of clay now sankhya believes that a pot has one shape so it is different from let us say a cup which is another shape or a jar which is different in shape so uh, that's the difference okay it's clear um only follow up is that you've mentioned that and i've heard from others that most followers of the yoga system no longer subscribe to the dualism right many of them became vedantins right so that's true, that's when true. if someone follows the yoga system yeah but they really are a vedantin when they experience the mati is that you, the same you, 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 are, you are right yeah. yoga can be called a springboard to vedanta you can see the great uh, in fact you, the popularization of yoga hatha yoga physical yoga actually he began with swami shivananda rishikesh divine society founder yoga as an idea as a concept was brought to western world by swami vivekananda maybe 30 years 40 years before so you can see but uh, swami shivananda was a monk of the shankaracharya order saraswati shivananda saraswati saraswati is one of the uh, 10 monastic orders of shankaracharya founded they were all advaitins or swami krishna and swami chidananda in the same tradition they were teaching they were uh, continue, continuing the tradition of shivananda of rishikesh but they were all actually they were teaching preaching only advaita so you can see so that is you are right you are right actually when a, when a person practices meditation or spiritual practice or some kind of uh, samadhi Uh, he will automatically naturally will think well what is behind behind what is the one supreme reality behind everything nobody can really be eternally satisfied with eternal dualism you know impossible in fact that is what is happening even in christianity you know in western world or well, the great intellectuals of late 19 18th century the late 18th century the entire 19th century the great indologists and great thinkers so upon who just one of them when they just read some upanishads sometimes very inaccurate translations you know still something struck them really speaking charles wilkins translation of gita is a very primary book but it, it struck a fire in the heart of emerson and you find in emerson a lot of advaita with thoreau more most unlikely person a lot of advaita you find so a search for some fundamental unifying or unitary principle that is natural for every genuine spiritual seeker it's an important thing to remember om shanti 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 hi hari hi om tat sat sri ram krishna arpanamastu